Hi folks, doesn't this little Bronco look cute? I thought it might be a suitable candidate for a differential throttle two-channel indoor foam flyer. Recently, I bought a couple of differential throttle two-channel flying wing things. See my review of those. Uh, they're so cheap, my plan was to use the radio and motors and install them in my own plane. I decided to sacrifice the B2 bomber which weighed less than 30 grams. So the challenge would be to build the Bronco light enough so that there was enough thrust to keep it in the air. I've been collecting blocks of polystyrene for a while, so I decided to build the main fuselage from polystyrene. The guys in indoor aviation referred me to the Z Art shop in Melbourne, which sells A4 sheets of 3 mil printing foam for under $27 for a 15 pack. I decided to use that for the lifting surfaces and the sideburns. I started by finding a plan online. I then scaled that onto A4 so I could use the A4 sheets of printing foam. I then cut out the profile shapes in cardboard and assembled a replica to get an idea of the size. This also helped me decide how I was going to build it. I made a visit to New Zealand to visit the aeronautical engineer in the family. He's had a lot of experience with foam construction over the years and has had a lot of recent experience building lightweight foam models. He was able to give me all sorts of tips and hints on how to build lightweight foam models and also how to build the tools to construct them. He also provided me with some nichrome wire for building a foam cutter. The first tool that I built was a 5 inch foam cutting tool using the nichrome wire and hobby sticks that I bought from Officeworks. Here is the finished foam cutter. All I have to do is connect up this 1S battery, like this, and voila, cut through foam just like that. I also made a sanding block with two grades of sandpaper glued to a piece of custom wood. With the tools and materials in place, I was ready to start construction. I used the cardboard sheets as profiles for the foam cutter. I cut the main fuselage out of this expanded polystyrene block. And I used my sanding stick to smooth off the edges. It's 9 grams so far. I then created a profile for the front and rear edges of the main fuselage. I would then use the foam cutter to round off the front and rear edges of the fuselage. Too easy. Let's sand that off a bit now. Then I did the same for the rear of the main fuselage. The next step was to cut out the slot for the main wing. I then cut the main wings from the 3mm printing foam sheets. I then cut out two side boom and tail fin sections. I cut grooves in the side booms for the wings to fit through. I duplicated the other side boom. Finally, I cut out a 3mm groove for the main wing to fit through. Let's check the weight so far. Fuselage, wings, side pylons, 14 grams. That compares with 13 grams for the old. I stemmed the wings over a curved surface to get an aerofoil section, and then I pinned it all together. It was really easy to lift the radio gear, battery bay and motors from the B2 bomber. I decided to keep the push configuration for now, as I thought if I changed it to a pull configuration and swapped the polarities of the motors, who knows what this would do to the gyro stabiliser. The dry weight of the Bronco came to 27 grams, 
and with the 150mm battery that came with the B2 bomber, this brought it up to 32 grams. This was slightly more than the B2 bomber which came in at 28 grams. I did a quick flight test in the car park to get the centre of gravity right, and I also noticed I didn't have much directional stability. So, I moved the motors outside of the side booms. This gave it more directional control. This is how it went. Now I know it can fly, I can complete construction. I nipped into the city to buy some green paint from Metro Hobbies. I then glued together the final assembly and I glued in some wheels taken from previous models. I installed the radio gear in the fuselage, gouging out a trough using a soldering iron for the receiver and battery. And there you have it. The final weight was 37 grams or up. This was about 9 grams heavier than the B2 bomber, so it would be interesting to see how it flies. I then took it to indoor aviation at Waverley. Let's see how that went. I carried the Bronco in my backpack and my other indoor flying planes on the carrier in a box on my bike. My first takeoff and my first landing. Ouch. Here's a hand launch. The North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco had experience in the Vietnam War. And here, one of my co-pilots is simulating war conditions. Missed me, fortunately. I had no problems taking off from the ground and getting enough height to clear the first barrier. The Bronco flew quite slowly, which is good for indoor flying. And the twin booms looked nice as it banked around the stadium. I do need to perfect my landings though. Conclusions! How successful was my first scratch build? Well, what went well? Uh, the foam construction was fast and light, uh, a lot faster than bolster construction. Uh, it was easy to remove the radio gear and motors from the B2 bomber, and I kept the push configuration for that. Uh, it was easy to install the B2 bomber radio gear using uh, my hot glue gun. Uh, the flight was stable and slow, which was ideal for indoor aviation, and it took off easily from the ground and seemed to land okay. What could be improved upon? Well, my build quality, I think I need more practice. Uh, I do plan to install larger motors and props in the Bronco to give a bit more thrust, so I'm not flying around at 100% throttle all the time. So I've ordered some slightly larger motors and props to match the ones in the other flying wing. Uh, which are 7mm diameter and 20mm long FRCR set with a 46mm FRCR prop set. Uh, I'd like to thread the wires to the motors through the side booms because they're kind of dangling in the breeze and I need to devise a more secure way of transporting the Bronco on my bike. 
at the moment I'm just putting it in my backpack which is a little bit uh, hazardous for it. Plans? Where to from here? While I'm waiting for the parts for the motors, uh, I plan to get on with my next project and this is a four channel foam build uh, using the four channel micro receiver I tested out in the Savage Bobber. So stay tuned and subscribe if you want updates to see if I get on with my next project. Bye for now.